even more interesting that he takes the time that they have that conversation about princesses or princes and he says a bit of both it's even more interesting because have we seen loki in any of these all these films he's in has never had a love interest at all We've and never, never a true anything. love interest in their defense he's usually either getting choked out beat up or <laughs> leading or leading you know planets trying to trying to enslave earth so what? he really he doesn't have time to go thing. on dates Donut Bag is brought to you by ExpressVPN. Your data is your business. Protect it with ExpressVPN for three extra months free with a one-year package. Go to the link listed in my Twitter profile. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Donut Bag. This episode, I am recapping Loki episode three with my buddies Pam Brukowski and Andrew Zerko. And how's everyone doing? This is the only episode I'm doing this week, which is weird for me because I usually do two or three episodes a week. But there is just nothing going on with the Penguins. There's nothing going on with the Steelers. I have almost run out of things to talk about, but uh, the the Loki stuff is going uh, strong. There's so much to talk about. So we had a great talk. So anyway, uh, runs a little long, so I will get right to it. The donut bag starts right now. First impressions. What did we think overall of the episode? Let's let's rate it one to ten. What do you guys think? I give this one a solid eight. Yeah. I love the opening song. Let me just say I have that actually written down in my notes. Song "Demons" by Haley, and I'm going to butcher this last name. Kyokyo. I don't. I, I don't know if I butchered that, but loved that opening score. Like that opening, like little soundtrack. Oh, fantastic! So yeah, eight I, out of ten for the whole episode. I'm as much as I, I I love this series. It's amazing. I and I've given the other two tens. I'm gonna have to go with Andrew on this one. I'm gonna give this one an eight just because it was like some odd exposition that sort of went off in its own little tangent. By the end of the series, I may give this like a ten plus, but right now I'm gonna give it an eight. I agree. I mean, well, first okay. of all, it was kind of short. Which it was would, very short. Mm-hmm. It was only. It was forty-eight minutes with all the trailers and, and yeah, credits. all the all the yeah. all the gobbledygook. So that's yeah, that's not a whole lot. Um, yeah, I, I I thought it's it's just a it's it's a middle episode. Stuff happened big stuff happened but still now here's the thing i oh, i i'm unfortunately i i forgot this uh i forgot to get get this um quote but basically tom hiddleston said in an interview that somebody asked him well what was your favorite um episode to uh um, to to uh do he said uh he said he liked he liked all of them but he his mind was blown after episodes four and five. So really? the best is yet to come, which is so exciting. It's, that is exciting. It is exciting. Yeah, I mean that 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 makes me excited. Yes, yes. All right, so let's get into it. All right. So we start with I guess her name is Sylvie, and that hunter C twenty, and they are somewhere some tropical location or something like that. And that's how she gets her to reveal where the timekeepers are and how to get through this TVA and all that stuff. So that was actually elevator is specifically right. Because she keeps asking her about the guards and she won't answer that, but she will answer where the elevator is. So it's different. Are, are we to believe that that was real or was that just something that Sylvie Loki put in that girl's mind? Like, was that supposed to be real? Like that had actually happened? No, was it, it was all in her. It was all in her head. It was all well, in her no, head. To, okay. and I don't, I don't think it was, to, I don't think it was all in her head. To my understanding was she has to build off of what's already there. So she has to build off another memory is what she says later in the episode. 
So she built off of that woman's memory and just implanted herself in it. But they weren't Ooh. physically at some tropical location. Yeah, you're correct. Yes, it was. It was. They, they in, it was in that there. girl's head. It was head. all in her mouth. It yeah. was all in her head. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that and that kind of was like kind of happened at the end of last episode. It just explains how she got the information because you know that 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 C twenty said, "Oh, she, she, I told her that I, she got me to tell tell me information." I told her. I told yeah. her. Yeah. Right. 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 So, uh, so Silly is at TVA headquarters, but she finds out her powers don't work. I don't think that was that much of a surprise to her. Really? She adapted very quickly. Yeah, but she didn't know, which was, I mean, I mean, she spent years hatching this plan, and that was a nice little wrench. Yeah, she did react quickly, but that was, uh, it was interesting that she didn't know that her powers don't work. I think it was a variable that she calculated into her plan. Like, what do I do if my powers do not work? How do I circumvent X, Y, Z? And so I think she had something in place to go around that. I think the wrench, the true wrench in it was the Loki variant that we're supposed to be following as the main character showing up. Like Loki actually showing up and like kind of, I don't know, for lack of a better way to say it, screwing the pooch on that one. He sure did. Yeah. So she <laughs> adapts quickly, uh, starts kicking butt, uses that whatever taser thing to just Fantastic wipe out people. Team, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Loki shows up, gets his daggers, and now we're uh, he 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 gets involved in all the fighting too, and Renslayer shows up, and <laughs> Sylvie basically takes loki hostage hostage and says keep come closer and i'll kill him and she's like fine i don't care I don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> that was so good <laughs> uh and loki steals the tempad they go and they go somewhere and which we go find out is lamentus one lamentus 2020 or 2077 Yes, yes. And I guess Lamentus One is in the Cree system or the Cree Empire or something like that. It's 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 barely mentioned in the comics, I believe. It's supposed to be so I have done on my notes because I did the I did the research. It's supposed to be the very edge, slightly beyond the end of the Cree territory. Interesting. So um they talk about they talk about like um, annihilation and stuff like that in the or something like that in the show. Annihilus is a character in the comics, so I'm curious if that's where they bring him in. That's a weird place to bring him in because he's kind of like a Thanos level villain, and I don't see these two defeating a Thanos level villain, but we'll see. So was the reason why that that thing was in there? you know, Lamentus one, 2077 was because it was a future apocalypse and that's where she likes to hide. Any, was it... apoc any apocalypse throughout time. So any end of world throughout time, she, they can technically hide in because everything is wiped from the map is what right. my understanding is. Right, but so, so, so that's why that's why that was in there. Just let, let's, well, it's like, okay, I got to hide out in an apocalypse. Here I go, so. Maybe. Exactly. Okay. And so, side note, um, Lantis-1 is also home to Quasar and Moon Dragon, who are big characters in the Guardians of the Galaxy series. So, and their Quasar is a, is the sibling of Marvell, from the Captain Marvel series, and Moon Dragon is Drax's, uh, uh, si uh, not sibling, um, offspring. So just throwing so that out there. I don't the, know if that's going to be a thing. In the Marvel Strike Force game, the the mobile game, Moon Dragon was just introduced as a as a character, and 
they say it's a member of the Infinity Watch or Quantum Guard or something like that. She changes teams like night and day. Okay. It's, so, I mean, yeah, kind she's, of a... She's not, been a Guardian. She's been an Avenger. She's been this, that, the third. So, okay. so I, 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 it also makes me wonder how much has Sylvie... How long has she been doing this? I mean, she's going to a, a distant planet in the year 2077. So sounds this like she's been, years of planning or years of uh, years in the making or something to that effect. Right. Right. But I mean, so oh, are we to believe this is one of the things I'm most confused about with the variants. Are we to believe that Sylvie, now let's remember, we're not talking about it. We're talking about somebody who doesn't read the comics necessarily or you know doesn't play the games for your average joe are we supposed to believe that sylvie has lived an entire life as a loki from birth i mean they had that conversation you know what i mean like is that what we're supposed to be believing right now i think so as far as i'm to understand it yes i think i I think i don't recall any character named sylvie in the comics or video games that i've played well I, I think what they've done, I mean, you know, ever since you know, she, people knew that this, this uh, what was her name, Sophia DiMartino, uh, th- that that they, they they knew she was a character, you know, people said, well, what is she? Is she Lady Loki? Is she Enchantress? Is she, right. you know, what is she? And what it sounds like what they've done, which what they've done with previous characters in the MCU is they've taken a little bit of both. They've taken a little bit from Lady Loki. They've taken a little bit from Enchantress. Uh, but I think from what we've learned from this episode is that she is Loki, but they've had a very different uh, life, you know, um, for, you know, for example, I mean, they were both, it sounds like they were both adopted, but Loki was the son of a frost giant or something like that. Um, And um, Jotunheim. Yes. And And Jotunheim. Yeah. And, uh, you know, L- Loki's adopted mother was um, Frida. You know, Frida, who, you know, Frida. so basically yeah. Loki lived as a prince on Asgard, whereas Sylvie did not have that kind of up- upbringing and supposedly taught magic by herself or something like that. So, uh, yeah, you know- I, had, I had big questions about that, to be honest. All right. So real quick. My two theories on this are one, it's either Lady Loki and they're just going to end it at that, or this is how Marvel is going to introduce Enchantress into the MCU. Uh-oh, where'd you go? Now, what's the enchant? Okay, who's other than them talking about enchanting and that's something in this episode talking about that this is some power that she has? Like, is the Enchantress a character specifically? Joe, yeah, can I take this? Yeah, go for it. <laughs> Okay, so the Enchantress is basically a very frequent antagonist to Thor. Um, she's basically the female version of Loki. She can cast incantations. She can cast, like, little, like, she can control mind. She can basically do everything you see in the series. Um, but she's a female with blonde, usually very long blonde hair, but a green costume similar-ish to Loki, even with the little, like, crown with the horns and stuff like that. So there's been a lot of internet speculation that that's supposed to be the Enchantress, not quote-unquote female Loki, although Loki has appeared as female within the comics before. So it's... But it's a toss up. It's however you want to interpret. They, it. but they kind of confirm that she is a lady Loki because they have a conversation, and Sylvie says, "Well, she was Loki, but that's not who I am anymore. Now I'm Sylvie. It's an alias." So I think well, that confirms. But, but but you look at how the MCU throws things around, and then she could be like, "I'm not Loki anymore. I'm Enchantress." Could be. Like, could be. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. So, um. Okay, so she tells Loki, you interrupted a plan that was years in the making, uh, that basically the plan was find the timekeepers and kill them. And it sounds like, it sounds like that's the, the plan. Sounds like she just wants to 
uh, be free of her predestined fate. It sounds Maybe. like she wants the break time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she wants to create a multiverse of madness where she has true freedom and her fate isn't decided by the timekeepers. Oh, okay. Now, which is, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, no, go, go ahead, Pam. No, I was just going to say, okay, so she, at the heart of what she wants, she wants the same thing Loki does because Loki wants to get to the timekeepers too. But she's a variant. Like, who are they variants of? Isn't Loki the main Loki? Like, I'm just, okay. my mind is blown with this. So, uh, Loki, I, I'm guessing Loki is Loki Prime, like the, the main yeah. one. But, but yeah, 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 where, why is there Far a Prime. whole, why is there a whole, right. uh, Loki? Like, how did that happen? All right, hold up, hold up, hold up. You're bringing, you're bringing the, like, the biggest thing that I have to talk about about this episode is they say, in a passing line, as they're walking towards what is supposed to be the arc that takes them to wherever the hell they're supposed to go after that, they say that all TVA TVA agents are variants. I did catch that. That's insane to me. So, like, so every one of them is a variant, and then they killed off their prime. Like, like, like how how does that happen? So are they trying to recruit Loki because they have to kill off this version of Loki? Like, like th- there's so much, there's so much going on there yeah. about like why are, they're all variants. And I think that was the other big reveal is they aren't. You know, we th- we we thought that the uh, TVA just created them and they were just they're just the timekeepers created them and yeah blah blah blah. It's like no. They were they were actually people that were captured and brainwashed and, and mind wiped or whatever into uh, becoming um, f- workers for the TVA. I mean, that does explain Mobius's obsession with jet skis. Exactly. That was like a that's, you know, in a previous life, he was he, he was, well, basically Owen, Owen Wilson. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dude. Uh, yeah. And and another thing, a, another question I have is. Okay, so Sylvie mentions later in the episode that she's basically been running from the TVA all her life. Why is she running from the TVA all her life? Maybe the TVA, because they know the future, knows that she is out to destroy them. So they've been trying to dis- to destroy her all her life. Yeah, but then you get in a cyclical loop of if they hadn't been hunting her, then exactly. she never really tried to destroy That's, um, them. That- that's some that's Terminator, a, that's some Terminator right level. That's some Terminator <laughs> level crap. Like we, we don't need to get into that. Sarah Connor, <laughs> call with me if you want to leave. <laughs> uh, but uh, but then again, couldn't like her whole life be some time affected amount of time that still shoots off of Loki? Like right you know what i'm saying like it's confused it's i don't i I, I okay it's confusing and i don't know it's basically my answer (laughs) it is and it's i'm having like i enjoyed this kind of exposition in this episode but at the same time like it's like my whole time i'm sitting here watching it saying to myself but who is she but what is she does she really have a whole life like i don't want to get invested with this character who by the way acted like she was they act like she's the worst human like worst character in the world and now she's like she's sympathetic she might be she she basically possibly went from the main villain to the hero yeah like in one episode a little bit yeah a little bit so Uh, okay go go ahead andrew so I had a question about Lady Loki when she first showed up and before the middle of the episode. So she's wearing the, the little Loki crown. Uh-huh. Uh, Which is with- partially broken. All right. Yep. Is that supposed to be a metaphor for something? No. Well, I don't know what it's. It's, it, it's supposed to be a reference to something in the comics, but but, but what? Oh, yeah, no, I mean, it's see, supposed to mean something. I mean, Loki has gotten his horns broken off like a billion times like that that that's nothing new in the comics my my thing was was this supposed to be uh like a gender thing like we don't need that y chromosome 
like knocked out. I don't think it's I don't think it's a gender thing. It's, it's possible, but I think it's I think it's just a, a, a nod to the comics because I think at some point in the comics, Lady Loki does have half her um, horn taken off. I don't know I mean, why. Every Loki has half his horns taken off, or both horns taken off. Like he he gets beat to crap all the time. So mm-hmm. okay, I, I I was just curious if anybody read anything else into that. Um, I do love the another callback though. What's that? Where oh, he's that in the-, the bar and he smashes the he smashes the glass. It's like another. That's a callback that, to Thor. It's a callback to Thor. Thor did the exact same thing, like in a coffee shop or something like that. Yeah, with the coffee he mug. Just, he just he just smashes it down in front of a like a like a restaurant full of people, and and people are looking like, "What the heck is wrong with you, dude?" Yeah, that was that was a callback. So I love that movie. I love that part. The, Thor's awesome in that first. The first Thor movie is awesome. First Thor is little, is is yeah. good. Second Thor is, I think, one of the worst uh, MCU movies. Agreed. And then, and then Thor is my wife is my wife's favorite movie. Yeah, yeah, it's that's oh. that's good stuff. Um, I mean, I, I I saw I saw Chris uh Chris uh whatever his name is Hemsworth. with his shirt off. I, I mean, I I would find him attractive. That's fine. There was a I'm funny thing. I, my heterosexuality. <laughs> he did. Um, he he was on uh, Saturday Night Live one time, and he said, "Yeah, I showed up." I showed up to Hollywood and it, it took me a whole 15 minutes to get a uh, leading role in, in Hollywood or something like that. <laughs> I wonder uh, why. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just looking at him. So back on Lamentus One, uh, they find a lady in a trailer. And, and I love that they can both, both get blown away, even after trying their own crap. I love that Loki is you know is is the husband it's like oh honey i love you it's like my husband would never say that get out yeah, of that here. Was funny. That was... <laughs> he was never that sweet get the hell out of here <laughs> <laughs> uh but she tells them that there's an arc that basically just the rich people can get on and for what it's worth loki's plan for getting on the train was way better than sylvia's so Loki's plan was, I'll be a guard, and 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 Sylvie's plan was, well, I'll just, I'll just mind wipe, I'll just take over people's minds. So, but she ends up doing that anyway, right? Well, they combine, they combine plans yeah, they combine. in the end, and it yeah. ends up working out very well. Yeah, yeah. So they're on the train, and they basically get to know each other. And he mentions, well, they they talk about the past and. Uh, she he he talks about his mother, and oh, so love th- that. This is sweet. It was sweet. Yeah, and so the mother taught him magic. There, mm-hmm. there was a line in I forget which movie, but I think Thor says something like, "You got magic from her, but she really like the dark or world like that." Yeah, that was Thor the Dark World. That was Thor too. Okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. you, you may have got mother's magic, but I got her trust. Something yeah. like that. So yeah, so they're on the train, and um, and, and then Sylvie talks about her childhood, and it's very different than than Loki's. So um, yeah, Sylvie Sylvie taught herself magic. Um, something about she mentions they they talk about love lives, and Sylvie says something about having a relationship with a postman. Which might be in reference to some other characters or something like that, or could be Stan Lee. Who knows? But <laughs> he was a well, postman in Fantastic Four. <laughs> that conversation was long enough in the middle of this episode to be significant. And I was writing down things they said and can't figure out what any of that stuff meant. Like, all right, no. So I feel like there's he- references there I don't get. Well, no. But like, like, what did you, what, what did you write down that, that you can't figure out? Well, I, I wrote down what. Wait, what did you, do, whatever you just said. I like she said something about something about uh, a postman. It's yeah, the postman. I mean, okay, I you know, it's it's down. it's one of those things that it could be a throwaway line, or it could lead to you know a whole a whole episode or series or something like that. You never know with these people, but it's it's never ah. an accident. I do know this one actually okay. because okay. i was i was listening very closely for this because i was waiting for them to actually reveal this in the series so um sylvia asked loki 
uh, to the point, and I'm going to butcher the I'm going to butcher the actual delivery, but he, she says, "Oh, you were a prince. There must have been a b- lot of princesses yeah, lined up." I wrote up. this one down. Yeah. Right or right. not, and she says something to the point or not, and he responds a bit of both. Uh, right, I wrote that down. Well, that's basically that's, that's huge, though. It's huge. Because it's it's we've we've had an NFL player coming out as gay, and now we have an MCU. Uh, uh, bisexual. I think he's the first uh bisexual that that he that's... is. He is the first confirmed bisexual character. Not not necessarily bisexual, but transsexual character because he does float back and forth from male to female. Hey, no, I was no, gonna say man. it's even more interesting that he takes the time that they have that conversation about princesses or princes, and he says a bit of both. It's even more interesting. Because have we seen Loki in any of these, all these films he's in, has never had a love interest at all. We've and never, never a true anything. love interest. In their defense, he's usually either getting choked out, oh, beat what? up, or <laughs> leading, or leading, you know, planets trying to trying to enslave Earth. So what? he really he doesn't have time to go thing. out on dates. Which makes this conversation to me even more significant not just because of the the fluid sexuality like that's fine whatever but that's cool good for him but the fact that he shows none of that previously in any incarnation of anything yeah. like i thought this has to be significant like well, that's that, that's why i love stuff yeah. like this because you know with a with a six episode series or you know six eight seven eight episodes whatever you know these things go in these little you know series we can find out things like this like his love life and stuff like that that you can't do in a two-hour movie so i yeah i I love i love that we can learn details like this but yeah i mean it's it's i i believe the the uh the creator of the series said that they wanted to emphasize that you know at some point they're going to say loki is bisexual so Awesome. Yeah, Alex. he's 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 gender tra- he he's transgender. So because he appears as both male and female, uh, LGBTQ like across the grid. So happy Pride yeah. Month, folks! Yay! Um, yay! Um, they say something. I I thought it was funny because it's it's sort of a uh, knockoff of of a uh, Wandavision when <laughs> when uh. Vision says something like, "What is, what is, what is grief but love enduring, or whatever, whatever that line is." And, oh yeah, and, and he's there and, and like tries to jot it down. It's like, "Oh yeah, that's really good." Here's and here's Loki like, "Love is a dagger." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. So so then he gets drunk, starts singing, and the train guards show up, and they get into a big fight. And they get thrown off the train. Here's something interesting. So both of them get thrown off the train. And what I, I think she doesn't she like try to kill him and say, like, give me the temp pad now or something like that. Yeah, and he and, like jumbles through it or something. And he says, Oh, here you go. Oh, wait, it's broken. Bullshit. Here is exactly here is a theory. It's not actually broken. That was an illusion. Oh, ever loving it's, shit. It's, it is. It is actually. <laughs> it, that thing is actually working, and that's probably how they're going to get the hell off the planet. One of the I, ways they're going to get the hell off think, the planet. I actually think the time police are going to come rescue him, and he's going to keep yeah. that in his back pocket. I think that's another theory. I think that's another theory. Another uh, way they could get off the planet. So we see a lot of. Uh, powers from Loki that I don't think we've ever seen before. One of them is he just threw out like green energy balls. I don't no, think we've ever seen that from him. He's always been able to do that. So his powers were very, very lessened in uh, in the TVA, but he's always been able to throw these like green energy bolts okay. and like kind of like thrust people into walls. He, he's always been a more physical version. They're showing two versions of Loki, sort of, because the Enchantress is definitely more like more mind tricky, and Loki is still kind of manipulative and mind tricky, but a little bit more hands on than she is. So, well, speaking, they're, they're of trying which, to show the difference between them. 
Speaking of which, so she explains how her magic works. She says she has to make physical contact, then she grabs her minds, and some of them have weak minds, and it's easy, and some of them have stronger minds. And then she says that young soldier from the TVA, her mind was messed up, and she had to go back hundreds of years to when she was back on Earth to to get them. And, and then Loki's like, wait, what do you mean she was on Earth? Uh, uh, all these all these. Yep. people are, are created it's like she's like what the heck are you talking about no they're not they're all variants so that was the big reveal that was, that a was big the big reveal, reveal for me and now it's like ooh, maybe that's and this is something we've said before maybe the tva isn't the uh isn't the good guys or maybe the timekeepers aren't the good guys they're hmm. not they're not as poshed and polished as you as they want you to think they are yes so well they were so overbearing they had to have a chink in their armor somewhere i think it's this, more of this a is chink. Deep chink i yeah, think this why. is you know what i mean this is basically yeah, no, I, I i think i think maybe the theme of the series is hey we have this these these timekeepers or whoever is basically deciding the fate of everything and who the heck are you to you know Maybe they don't have the, the best intentions in mind, or maybe maybe one entity shouldn't be controlling all this stuff. I mean, that's that's basically God stuff right there. I could see Loki at the end of this forming his own like little guardians click with like Mobius and like female Loki and I don't know, time yeah. variant basher number one, and like I don't know, like just <laughs> throw them all in there. Yeah, sure. Make a make a group, make it make a club, sure. And uh, the, the, the dude that's never seen a fish, got to have him in there, too. Yeah, I, oh, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I've never seen a fish. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, that goes off on a whole other tangent, though, too. Like, if, if these people are just, like, variants themselves, every single one of them, like, they have all had limited exposure to things, and they're all, I, I don't know, it's just, I, I, I can't wrap my brain around this. I really can't. Like, it does I, the get... whole thing. It does get confusing. Yeah. It gets confusing. And like, okay, like kidding around, kidding aside about like, okay, we they can have their own little guardians flick off by themselves. But can Loki and Sylvie exist long term together? Sure. Can any I variant... mean the multiverse is madness, so who cares? I mean but in the same place. I mean I think multiverse... that, that role that I think that role that I don't think that rule actually exists. The the two people can't can't be the same. I think that I don't think that's actually a thing or something like that. I agree with Joe. I feel like they're just gonna be like, ah, whatever with that rule. You mean back to the I future know. was bullshit? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, we have this multiverse of madness thing coming, but at some point, uh, I don't know. I, I yeah. just feel like it's, it's everybody it's, is they are confusing. who they are. Like at some point they can, all have to come together, don't they? It is yeah. confusing. Go can, ahead, I, Andrew. can I just weigh in real quick? Um, so the fight scene where they're in the like cabin of the train and they're fighting off all the guards and da da da, da that actually gives me some confidence that Loki can handle himself in a situation if he really wanted to. Okay. And it gives the Avengers a bit more credit. Too. We need we need to uh actually we need to talk about that scene when they go. They go to that whatever where the where the arc is where the arc's about to 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 take off. Oh, no, 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 I was talking. I was talking about on the train. Oh, you mean on the train? Okay, yeah. I'm just talking about yeah. on the train where Loki's just like whipping people around. He's just, he's just doing what he wants. Like that gives me some more confidence in the fact that the Avengers are actually badasses because they dealt with this dude and basically made him look like him. Yeah. So we can we can go to we can go to the Atlas. Or not Atlas arc part. Yeah, after. let's 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 go to the arc part because so they're still fighting people, and even if it's even when it's the end of the world, these guards are still <laughs> fighting. Like, what are you doing? How did the guards not know to just teleport off that damn planet? Yeah, yeah. What's, <laughs> I mean, that was that was one sad thing. It's like, oh, only the rich people can get off the planet. Like, uh. That was a, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that um, was a little dark. But something happened, which I think was huge. 
a pillar was about to fall on them. And Thank Loki's you. like, I got this. And he, you. he stops it. How? How does he stop that? I'll tell you how. He Thank has you. the time stone. No, he does what? not. Bull crap. Remember when he had that? There was that drawer with all the infinity stones. Well, don't you think he, all of them out? Don't you think he would have taken some? No, but he why have. did he pull all of them out then? He didn't take all of them, but he did take at least one of them. Then, then why did he happen to choose the time stone? Why didn't he choose the power stone? He could have just pushed that building back then. Instead, like, why is it the time stone? Maybe that's that that was the only opportunity he had was just to take the time stone. Okay, wow. Ah. Well, then, then how else do you explain him just just stopping a pillar and the way it, no, was, it was little magical flippy powers? Oh, like, yes, the magical flippy powers that we, we've never <laughs> seen before. <laughs> I don't know how he turned that building around, and it's driving me crazy. And they no offense to like uh, Joe, I'm not saying your theory is incorrect. They there was no stone blow, so that is true. There was there no, was no like, yeah, huh? I'm harnessing the power of whatever stone. Yeah, I can do whatever. So, and if you I, had the time stone, wouldn't you? Uh, yeah. Yeah, wouldn't that, it just not be there when it fell? Right, right. You know what? I don't like pieces of this moon falling on me, so I think I'm gonna get the heck out of here. So yeah, who knows? <laughs> who knows? Yeah, um, I just uh, I, I that 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 thing falling on him and him just like psychically psychically lifting it, and I'm I'm confused because I mean <laughs> Loki. Well, Loki has shown versions of telekinesis before so i i i i don't really know where to go from there so pamela what's your take (laughs) i i I mean i'm just listening along because like i said i'm the same like there's so many possibilities of things we could have seen in this episode like was the time stone involved what you know who i'm I'm, I have to watch it again. I have to watch it again because there's just so much <laughs> there. On the surface, it's just this little, you know, expository. Here's this, here's this. But then when you start talking about it, what about this? What about this? I, I don't know. I, I feel like it makes sense to have the Infinity Stones that we've already seen and they made a point to show us and maybe Loki used one and it would tie back to the Avengers movie in the main Marvel movie arc it makes sense that there's something like that going on it does and and for loki to have been able to use and manipulate this stuff in ways we didn't realize before i mean that makes sense to me but i don't know it's so much there so much there yeah um also before we get away from the tower falling scene and I just want to compliment all the camera work that went on in the like scenes before and scenes leading up to the tower falling. Great camera work. Like that was that was fantastic. I was engaged. Like there wasn't even anything really going on. Like they fought like one or two guys, but everything was just them running around and them doing things. And I was engaged. So kudos to the camera work. Have to say. It was very pretty. Yeah. Um, there was that there, there there was a scene, I believe, in the trailer where uh people thought it was Black Widow. It's Loki, and now we know that's that it's it's Sylvie just sitting on a planet. It was purple. People thought maybe it was Vormir or something like that. Uh, but we, we have yet to see that. So we're probably gonna see that next episode. They're just they're just like sitting together, so yeah, maybe. Um, you, you know what? I mean, not to go off on another tangent, but another thing I thought was interesting about this episode is, I thought it was interesting that Owen Wilson wasn't in it. Like yeah. they spent the first couple of episodes building this almost buddy buddy bond between Mobius and Loki, and in this episode he wasn't in it at all. So 
is this just more of Loki, our Loki, who we know and love? Is this just more of him, you know, bonding with somebody else and just being his typical kind of slippery self? I, who's he bonded to? Like, who is he? I, you know what I'm saying? Like, I thought it was very strange that Mobius yeah. wasn't in this one. I thought that was an interesting fact. Basically, most of the TVA wasn't in it at all, except for that that first couple well, of minutes. I think, but True. I think that's building to a future episode, even if it's not the next episode, because it may be about them like escaping the doomed planet, duh, whatever. And but I think there's going to be the TVA is going to come to a head at some point. And they're going to have to deal with Mobius and their all their relationships and da da da. So I think that's either coming mid next episode or probably sixth episode, and then you're going to build to a climax in the final episode about the timekeepers. I mean, we're halfway through this thing, and we still have a lot of questions. No, more questions now than we had even like last week. Right. And then last week, I thought was question filled. Right. Exactly. Right. They this is, they an- they they formed more questions than they answered. It was it was almost like an episode of Lost. Like like oh, you, you get yeah. one 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 answer leads to uh, forty two more questions. But thankfully, um, I know there's an end to it. <laughs> well, yeah, really. Um, one thing about um, this is why does Sylvie so insistent on not being called Loki? Because I think they're trying to make her the Enchantress. She, they're trying to diversify her from Loki distant enough to call her a separate character. That makes sense. That I, I'm, I'm purely speaking from a, what would I do if I was a Marvel executive, like, space? But Silver... So, What's her name? Sylvie. Sylvie? Yeah. Uh, Sylvie, I, I don't know of her in the comics. I mean, she might have popped up once or twice that I missed. Um, I, I'm sorry if I did. But what you're saying makes sense, though, because the only way they can continue with her as a character going forward is if she is distancing herself from our known and loved Loki. So maybe that's why she's so insistent on it. Because I have a, bad. I have a bad feeling about how this might end up, and I don't, you know, I'm, I don't even want to put it into existence. So I'm not even going to oh, mention this possibility. Put it into existence, Joe. I know you can't tease us like that. <laughs> I think she, re- I think she becomes Loki Prime after I all hope of this. You're wrong. I'm I think this is exactly. I think this is the end of Tom Hiddleston in 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 these things, and I think I don't. I. All right. First off, well, I don't think that, I, I think they signed Tom Hiddleston to like a lifetime handcuffed to handcuffed you to this. I don't know. Back. He's been doing this for 10 years now. I mean, look at everybody else. Look, look at almost all the original. What else? Is, but what else is Tom Hiddleston doing? <laughs> Do things. Name, name another Tom Hiddleston role. <laughs> I don't Thank know. Thank you. Thank maybe you. maybe he wants to have a food show. I don't know. The uh, man knows where his butt is breaded, or his <laughs> bread is covered. <laughs> Good lord, I butchered that. Oh, <laughs> Please do it again. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> butt is breaded. But right if my butt is ever breaded, I am in big trouble. <laughs> I'm never gonna live that down, am I? That's no, a great man. That's a that's a great. <laughs> is that called a malapropism or or, or uh, anyway? Uh, another thing is th- the thing with Sylvie and her mother. It, it seems like I don't know. I don't know. Maybe there's something there too. Um, didn't didn't she say the mother died or something like that? Yeah, yeah but she didn't ever young. bring it up briefly. Yeah, that's what she uh, said. I mean, we're gonna we're gonna find out more about her. We're gonna find out the truth about her probably in the next three episodes. I hope. I, I mean, because there's <laughs> I there's mean, a lot there's a lot of mystery there. There's so much. There's a lot. I agree. I'm there's. That's what I'm saying. I mean, this here's this character we know nothing about, who's never even been hinted at until the end of episode two. 
and there she is and they have this whole episode devoted to his relationship with her i just thought that was bizarre i, I just thought that was bizarre. that's a thing it's like you know these new characters is like is this someone that's going to be around forever or is this something that's going to be around for one one or two episodes you know it's like like um what's her name the, the, the head of the flag smashers or whatever in, in falcon and winter soldiers like, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah well yeah okay 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 good good point so you know so yeah, yeah so what is had a very distinct finite arc yeah so does that mean that this Loki, lady loki which i'm hoping too joey is a distinct finite arc and we're going to end up with our loki because otherwise that's just kind of a whole nother thing if you're introducing someone who's gonna be around forever you know what i'm saying yeah yeah okay yeah yeah so like, the enchantress in the comics is blonde and wears a very similar outfit yeah. to loki so high hopes that this lady loki ends up with her own identity outside of like being a quote-unquote lady loki i'm i'm looking up oh on disney no, no never mind i'm trying to find the length like what tom hiddleston's contract's like but i'm, I'm not having any luck here uh, <laughs> if you renewed mm, it for five years mm, well you're at way the beginning of you know I mean, that's a long time. They've got big plans for him if that's the case. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, you know, obviously this is going to lead into the Doctor Strange movie Multiverse of Madness. You know, so it sounds like at the end, uh, Loki and Sylvie are going to accomplish their goal. And then where do we go from there? You know, so it's... It's like thing you sense that 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 sure, um, you sensed in the chat of you know, um, and I've seen that I've, I've seen that many times. It's like you know, Loki's doing stuff and and Wanda's doing stuff, and Doctor Strange is like, "What the heck are you people doing?" Like, oh my goodness, what are you? Like, well, Loki is supposed to play heavily into both. Yeah. So, okay. Wait, both what? Both the Doctor Strange and what? WandaVision and the new Spider-Man. Oh, 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 oh. That's why it's okay. called No Way Home. He's supposed to be like di dimension jumping in theory. Okay. That's what I've heard. There you go. Okay. Just curious. I guess <laughs> I'm, my brain is just mush about all of this right now. I'm just really You know not, what? Uh, At this point, we could just guess and enjoy the ride. Yeah, it's basically exactly. all we could do. Yeah, exactly, and it's, Joe. Joe, it's, Joe has got it exactly down. It's you know what? It's a fun ride. Uh, I'm gonna check right now because I asked, um, I put it out there. What is your favorite series? Just so I, I just uh, asked Twitter, and the last time I checked, it was like almost even between all three of them. And wait, favorite series between yeah. between um WandaVision, Falcon and Winter Soldier, and Loki. Ooh. As of right now. As of right now, you know what? As of right now, I'm gonna uh, ugh, I don't want to say Loki, but man, maybe maybe it is. Now, as of right now, I'm gonna say Falcon. Same. I like I like I like my grounded I like my grounded stories. My because I'm a big Spider-Man fan, so I like my grounded, like boots on the ground, like you're doing the you're doing the work kind of heroes. So, WandaVision, the, WandaVision, I enjoyed. I enjoyed WandaVision. I'm not gonna say I did. But. I I I I hate to redo something, but nothing really happened in Falcon and Winter Soldier. Um, yeah, it did Falcon started out as Captain America? He up as Captain America. Yes, it's a horror, and he he embraces the whole thing. And I, yes, he he gives it up and then embraces it and all that stuff. But still, but, no, you what, can't ignore Bucky's journey in that too. What Bucky? Do, what did Bucky do besides? Okay, he got a little peace of mind, and he found out that his arm could fall off. He so that was PTSD. That was the entire thing of that of that series was like was like dealing with people with PTSD. 
it is right now almost <laughs> it is almost split it's it's 38 percent one division 34 percent loki and 28 percent uh falcon and winter soldier so basically people I, I, like them care. almost equally um, I, and i don't care uh, and you know uh, what you could almost say the same thing about wanda wanda started out as sad and um you know yeah uh, and she sad was, and alone she was, and she ends up sad and alone but also yeah, she was, uh, she, by the way yeah, she's she was doing ptsd Witch. and then like some manic depressive disorder but i think i think in, in the end of this one well we you know the the entire game is about to change <laughs> so i think the end result of this is going to be uh, the, the the impact on everything is going to be much bigger than the uh the ends of uh wandavision and falcon and winter soldier yeah right. i think it's just a little teasers i i think you're right and i think that it's i'm sitting here trying i'm looking at your poll i missed that today i um if you go by at the halfway point of each of these shows which was your favorite mm, that okay. would be a different question well that would that be a much different question because definitely falcon and winter soldier would be like last because it, like it, there are parts there are some episodes that just the middle wasn't all that great you know it was it was it was great at the end but the middle wasn't all that great um it's wandavision great. in the middle of it i think wandavision just got better as the as the thing went on and it was just so fascinating and different you know every episode was just uh, its own self-contained craziness and awesomeness you know going from decade to decade in the sitcom thing and then everything that happened so um yeah right now and right now yes a lot of cool stuff has happened in loki but there's also been a lot of exposition so yeah um so yeah i would maybe maybe i would say wandavision one loki two and falcon uh and winter soldier three yeah see i'm the opposite i would say loki is so far if he keeps going i'm gonna put that number one and then i'm gonna put Falcon and Winter Soldier, number two. And then WandaVision, not that I don't like that series. I love that series and what they did and the parodies they, not parodies, the satire they did on the sitcom stuff and all, all of that. Really, really great. Not to say any of those series are really bad, but I would put WandaVision third. It's, it's such a hard question too, because... WandaVision set up our expectations for Falcon and Winter Soldier and the two of them together have set up our expectations for Loki like it's a great question to look at from all these different angles because you know if you just go on the surface what's your favorite that's totally different than you know what was I don't know like okay. there's so much perspective there a lot of uh, perspective it's very subjective uh, okay so I found the I found the quotes uh and I hope this isn't another misdirection like they've oh. done in 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 WandaVision or whatever. But they they asked Tom Hiddleston. Um, uh, he said, "Buckle up for events to come." Quote: "This takes off in a new direction in Episode Four, and then the destination of that journey kind of comes to fruition in Episode Five. So four and five, I mean, buckle up because we're going somewhere. I hope you don't see it coming. Yes." Bring Good. it! Good. I know, bring it. I agree. <laughs> so excited. So excited. I I am I'm you know and I'm I'm kind of liking this when Wednesday morning thing. I'm getting used to Wednesday mornings as opposed to Friday mornings. So hopefully they, they continue that. So is there another series planned for after this one? I think the next one is what if or something like that, right? Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, and that's supposed to like, be an anthology. Like immediately after. Was that, that like, a wait? Was that a cartoon though? No, that, that was a that was a real thing. Yeah, but I mean, is that like okay? Oh yeah. no, what it, if... it is supposed to be in cartoon format. Yes. Oh, it is a cartoon. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm not. Not that. Yeah. I'm not that crazy about that. But uh... the next live action one. I mean, we got to talk about Black Widow coming up. Oh, Very Black Widow is coming up when oops, right? I, I'm going to see it Friday and I am super stoked. Wait, this week already? 
No, oh, wow. Friday, uh, July, Friday night. Oh, okay. I'm like in a time warp. I don't even know what day it is. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm good. more interested in it. Andrew. Yeah, this right up your alley because this is a time warp too. And, because- Andrew is from a, a, another universe where the phrase get your butt breadered is, is a common <laughs> phrase. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Black Widow comes out July 9th. Uh, ooh, I need, I need to go get um, a ticket for that. Joe, um, eventually, I will find a phrase to hang you with. Oh, Uh-oh. it'll happen. Don't worry. Beware, <laughs> I, I say a lot of do stupid things, so do stupid. All right, I already have it. <laughs> <laughs> I will not, I, I will not kill you with that. With get your butt breaded. I mean, well. We'll self-contain that within this episode. No, oh, sure. you might. Okay. <laughs> Maybe Pam will. But not me. <laughs> I wrote it down. Right, Pam, Pam didn't where my real enemy is. Pam, Pam didn't commit to anything. <laughs> All right, guys. Yeah, I'm. I'm so excited. And uh, you know, I mean, I, I will say one thing is, you know, what after uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier, maybe it's like after you know you wanted to talk like after every every two or three episodes or something like that. But here, it's like every episode needs to be dissected like this because there's so many questions and so many crazy things happening. So, uh, in terms yeah. of discussion points, there's this is definitely a, a lot more interesting. That's true. I'm just so glad you guys seem to be flustered in the same place as I'm flustered and have questions in the same places I have questions because exactly. sometimes you watch these things and you're same. like, oh, okay. Is it just me? <laughs> no, exactly. No, it's definitely not just you. <laughs> well, that's good. I'm glad about that. Yes, we're we're all in the same boat. We're all in the same arc. Uh, yeah. Trying to try, not trying to get off a planet, but we're all we're all in the same place trying to figure this out. Awesome, guys. Thanks. Uh, this was awesome. Always. Yeah, Joe. And, uh, anytime you want to talk about anything, hopefully, just let me know. Hopefully, know, we, could, right? uh, we could, we could, we could talk next week. Sounds wonderful. Right. Can't awesome. wait. Awesome. All right. Thanks, guys. All right. See ya. Right. See ya. Bye. Bye. Bye.